Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the Migration Update for April 9th, 2024 from the Braddock Bay Hawkwatch. Kim and I started out the day at the Braddock Bay East Spit. Here's a view out over Lake Ontario, and as you can see, it was a beautiful morning. The lake was really calm and the winds were calm as well. We walked all the way out to the end of the barrier island, and here's a view of Braddock Bay from out there. Here we have a large tern with a thick orangish red bill. This is a Caspian tern. Here we have three large sandpipers that were fairly heavily marked down the sides and have long bills. These are greater yellow legs and they were our first of the season. We had a total of 54 species from the East Spit. Next, we headed over to Braddock Bay Park to start the Hawk Watch. It was mostly sunny with some high cirrus clouds moving in throughout the day. The wind started out light and southerly, but by 10 a.m. the northeast lake breeze had kicked in. A bit of a raptor flight picked up, and we held on to the flight line for a few hours, but eventually that northeast lake breeze pushed the raptors away from the lake shore and over the parkway and out of sight. We lost them for a little while, but then towards the mid-afternoon the wind shifted more easterly, and it launched a huge flight of turkey vultures and sharp-shinned hawks and kestrels and the flight line was low and overhead, so a really big surprise afternoon flight after we thought we had lost the flight for the day. Here we have a large woodpecker that's spotted underneath, and we see a lot of yellow in the wings and tail. This is a northern flicker. Here we have a kind of shorebird. In fact, it is a type of plover, and we see two breast bands, and this bird dropped in and landed in the grassy field while calling. This is a killdeer. Here we have a medium-sized bird with a reddish-brown back and a lot of striping to the front, relatively large bill and a long tail, and this bird was perched up singing, mimicking other bird calls and songs in groups of twos. This was our first brown thrasher of the season. Here's a swallow that's blue on top with a red throat and pale yellow underneath with a forked tail. This is a barn swallow. Here we have one large raptor chasing another. The top left bird is a large dark raptor that's getting a white head and white tail. This is an older, immature bald eagle. The bird that is chasing, that has a fish, is a very lanky black and white raptor that's slightly smaller than the eagle. That is an osprey. And I like this photo that shows some evasive maneuvers from the osprey to get away from the bald eagle. And in fact, it did get away with its fish. And in this photo, you can see the fish that the osprey was carrying. Here we have a hawk that has a long tail and long rounded wings. So we should be thinking excipiter. And we look and see that this bird has a relatively small head and a very squared off tail. And the way it was flying, it was very small in size, quick flaps, very compact bird overall. Those make this a sharp shinned hawk. Here we have a medium sized hawk with kind of a medium length tail. It's not long like an excipitor, but it's not quite as short as something like a red tailed hawk. If we look at the underside markings, we see that it does not have dark patagial bars and it doesn't really have a belly band. It has brown vertical streaking that starts all the way up on the upper breast and then extends down to the middle part. And perhaps most importantly, as if we look at the wingtips, we see that there are translucent crescents near each wingtip, and we also see that the wingtips are relatively blunt or squared off. All of those features make this an immature red-shouldered hawk. Here we have a small raptor with pointed wings, so we should be thinking falcon. It has a distinctive facial pattern, and overall it's light underneath, just a couple of spots. Those features make this a male American kestrel. Here we have a bird that's two-toned beneath and has a small reddish head with a white bill. This is a turkey vulture, and like I said earlier, we had a moderate number of turkey vultures throughout the morning, but it was really the big afternoon flight that was excellent. We had over 1,000 turkey vultures during the one hour and more than 2,000 vultures total for the day. Here we have a hawk that's shaped like a flying cross with a long tail and long rounded wings, so we should be thinking excipitor. It has orange barring on the underside of the body, so we should be thinking adult of either Cooper's hawk or sharp shinned hawk. Looking at the overall shape of this bird, we see a large head and long wings that are held out very straight. And we also see that the outer tail feathers are shorter than the central ones, giving the tip of the tail a more rounded appearance. Those features make this an adult Cooper's hawk. 
Here's another hawk with a long tail and long wings with rounded wingtips, although in this photo it's a glide posture, so the wingtips are tucked back a little bit. But this is another accipiter. Again, we see that orange barring underneath, so we know that this is an adult of either sharp-shinned hawk or Cooper's hawk. In this case, we see a more squared off tail or even a little bit notched here in the center, but we don't see shorter outer tail feathers at all. And we see that the head is relatively small. And it's kind of got a cute looking face where it looks like a big eyeball on a cute face, just not as fierce looking. This is an adult sharp-shinned hawk. Here we have a large grayish tan bird with a long neck held out straight and a red cap and long trailing legs. This is a sandhill crane. Here we have a swallow that is brown on top and kind of dusky, especially here on the upper breast. This was the first of the season, northern rough-winged swallow. Here we have a large, lanky, angular, black and white raptor. We see a white head with a black line through the eye. This is another osprey. And play along and see if you can identify this bird. So look at the overall shape. What does it look like? Well, it looks like a flying cross. Do we see a long tail? Yes. Do we see long wings with rounded wingtips? Yes. So flying cross, we should be thinking accipiter. Do we see orange barring underneath? Yes, we do. So we know this is an adult of either sharp shinned hawk or Cooper's hawk. How do we tell them apart? Well, look at the shape of the tail. It's a very squared off tip of the tail, maybe even a little bit notched. Very small bird overall from the way it was flying. And we also see a very small head here that barely sticks out past the wings, which are pushed forward. Overall, it's not super large and lanky looking. It's a little more compact looking. This is an adult sharp-shinned hawk. Here we have a small raptor coming into land. We see very pointed wings, so we should be thinking falcon. We see its overall light underneath, so we should be thinking American kestrel. And we see that it has vertical brown streaking to the breast and a completely banded tail that makes this a female American kestrel. Here we have a large grayish blue wading bird. We see long trailing legs and we see a neck that's curved into an S and a large yellow bill. This is a great blue heron. Here's a bird that had a very stuttery flap. We see a very flat head that curves down to a very sharp bill. We see a lot of brown camouflage plumage to the top side and bright yellow with a black bib underneath. And we see some very pointy tail feathers. This is an eastern meadowlark. Here we have three large dark water birds with long necks. We see some yellow to the face and relatively long tails. These are double crested cormorants. And there was one individual in the flock that had a paler neck, which is typical of the immature double crested cormorants. And towards the end of the day, we had three American kestrels perched in the same tree. Taking a look at the eBird report from the Hawkwatch today, we had 71 species. I picked up three new species for the season today, which were Greater Yellowlegs, Northern Rough-Winged Swallow, and Brown Thrasher. Taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrant raptor totals, today we had 2,076 turkey vultures, 2 ospreys, 3 bald eagles, 12 northern harriers. For accipiters, we had 64 sharp-shinned hawks and 2 cooper's hawks. For buteos, we had 3 red-shouldered hawks and 23 red-tailed hawks. We had 2 golden eagles, both very distant, and we had 37 American kestrels for a grand total of 2,224 migrating raptors. That brings the April total to 8,883 and the season total to 17,003. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, it's looking mostly cloudy with a high in the upper 50s and light west-northwest winds. Not great, but also not terrible. I would expect moderate migration and hopefully the good turkey vulture flight will continue and hopefully we get a good mix of other raptors on those somewhat favorable winds. For Thursday, we're looking at rain early and then cloudy with showers, high up around 70, and strong southeasterly winds. So this could be an interesting day. They were calling for more rain, and they've taken a lot of it out of the forecast. We've done well recently on southeasterly winds, but it's looking like it will still be a somewhat gloomy day. So a little bit hard to predict. Hopefully, if uh, there's not enough lift for things like turkey vultures to be moving, then at least maybe sharp shins and kestrels will be moving as we get into the point in the season when we're starting to see more and more of those. 
But overall, I see those strong southerly winds and warm temperatures, and I'm thinking it could be a good day for migration. It's the kind of day that unusual stuff can show up, especially you get some rain and knocks down some rarities. So I'll be out on Thursday for sure, but the raptor migration might be hit or miss. We'll keep an eye on it. And for Friday, we're looking at rain showers and increasing winds high in the upper 50s and southwest winds at 20 to 30 miles per hour. So that's our best wind direction, and it looks like it's going to stay that direction all day. It's a little bit on the strong side. Um, maybe around 15 miles per hour would be ideal. Sometimes the stronger southwesterly winds push everything over towards the lake rather than overhead. And plus you're getting blown around, so it's a little bit uncomfortable. But again, nice southerly winds, perfect direction. So hopefully there's enough lift. Um, which I would imagine with winds that strong, there should be, even though there won't be any thermals because of no sunshine. So Friday is definitely another day to keep an eye on as a possible good flight. All right. Well, it was another great day out at the Hawk Watch. We had beautiful weather and a really good flight of raptors, especially that afternoon flight with the turkey vultures, sharp shins, and kestrels. And we had a lot of visitors to the Hawk Watch again today. There's still a lot of people in the area who traveled here for the total solar eclipse. So a lot of people from out of the area, a lot of new faces up at the Hawk Watch. So nice chatting with some different people today, and hopefully they got to see some nice birds. It's looking like some interesting weather coming up in the next few days as we get those strong southerly winds with a chance of rain. So who knows what will turn up over the next few days. And Hopefully we'll start getting broad-winged hawks at any time. So I hope to see you out soon at the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.